special forces of the United States military are the best that you can find. The best equipped, the best trained, the best supported, and you find the best men there as well. Irregular units have been formed to combat irregular types of warfare. Generally, a task unit is a combination of individuals with specialized skill sets that come together to form a team. You might have a sniper, a demolition expert, an intelligence specialist. To me, it's the, it's the tip of the spear. That's where you have to just rely on your training. We're getting ready to be tested. We all feel we're the best, and we're going to show them we're the best. Part of the challenge to securing two rooms at once is you've automatically cut your unit in half. So that means half of your gun's going one way, half going another. So there's a harmony to it. Each man's going through the same thing. That's the prevailing element, the thought process to succeed, to, to, to overcome, to do what we need to do. What we need to do right now is be secret and be stealthy and you're faced with all the unknowns that you can imagine. You don't know what you're gonna encounter. Every time you come to a closed door in a hostile area, the thought goes through your mind that what's on the other side. Entering an engine room, as you can see, various levels above you, various levels below you, catwalks, uh, boilers, different things for someone to hide behind. Your training gets tested at this spot because of all the variables. Who goes up, who goes down, that could be a potentially hazardous nightmare scenario. You may hear an enemy before you see an enemy. So your ears have to be just as in tune as your eyes are. And you stack on that door. Everybody's thinking the same thing. Is this going to be where the bad guys are? Sometimes you can have a full conversation in the eyes. Violence of action is leading there to be no question of who's in charge and, and dictating who breathes and who doesn't breathe. It is so important to be precise because time, seconds, can mean lives. Bang, bass rope comes out. I'm exposed, they've got my back. I'll hit the deck, I gotta get out of the way. Now I've got to cover for my exposed brother. Let me tell you something. If you hear someone firing and you're in a chopper, you want to get the out of that helicopter. You don't want to go down in the helicopter like so many soldiers have. If you find yourself with the enemy in your sights, there's no hesitation. You must take them out. There's just not a second thought. Anytime you're in a firefight, there's, a, there's just an inherent chaos to it. There's lives at stake, there's lead flying, there's screaming, there's shouting, there's agony, there's pain. When you come under fire, that is the point when your greatest weapon is ultimately tested, your training. You kind of go into a overdrive gear where it's just right on the training, bang, bang. In a situation where your team member goes down, there's absolutely no question of what your response is going to be or whether you're going to help him or not. We leave no man behind. The decision to leave a team member behind, few and far between. But if there was a greater danger to the whole unit as opposed to the one man down, probably be the only time you'd do something like that. But in the back of your mind, you know I'm coming back to help my bro. As the world changes, administrations change, battlefronts change, warfare changes. One thing that won't change is our special forces. They will always be there.